Hey, welcome back everybody. Andy here with Silent Defense. I haven't put out a couple videos, any videos in a while. Sorry about that. I've been pretty busy. I haven't had a chance to get out to the range. So I figured I'd throw out something a little bit different today. One of the topics, well, the only topic I'm going to cover today is inspections. Uh, with inspections on rifles, uh, I get asked this a lot. I am in armor and uh, advanced armor with my certifications. I have built several rifles for both myself and for other people. Hunting rigs, tactical rigs, you name it. Uh, a lot of this, all the stuff you see behind me here, this is all stuff that I've built. And I've gotten along quite a bit in the past couple of years learning a lot about ARs, learning about things to look for, talking to other armorers, talking to agencies and TAC teams, and seeing what works and what doesn't. And I'd like to pass a lot of that on to you. This is applicable to purchasing a brand new rifle, purchasing a used rifle, or building your own AR. And this is all specifically applicable to ARs. So what we're going to do is, without further ado, I'm just going to jump right into it and start hammering on a couple topics here. Okay. So the inspection process is going to be about the same for buying a used rifle or a new rifle. I'm going to go over buying a new rifle, and then you can apply that over to buying a used rifle, however you see fit. Now, let's say you go to the store or you order a rifle through the mail to your local FFL, uh, you need to inspect your rifle before you take delivery of it. Now if you ship it into your FFL, that may not be possible and you're going to have to ship it back if it has problems. But if you're dealing with a high quality company like LaRue, Noveski, Daniel Defense, BCM, uh, list goes on, you're going to be dealing with high quality weapons that don't need a whole lot of inspection on them because those companies are known to have very high, quali very high quality assurance and very high quality control. So the level of inspection on those doesn't need to be as thorough. Level of inspection on lesser weapons, weapons that tend to be in the middle range or even in the bottom range, you can, you can name, name them all up from the bottom. I'm not going to because I can just see somebody getting all butthurt and sending me a message saying, why would you say that we suck? Well, because you do suck, so I'm not going to name any names. Just save myself the headache there. There's a lot of companies out there that suck, but I'm not going to start naming names publicly. If you, want to con you guys want to contact me with what you have questions about, I'd be more than happy to give you my experience. But as an armorer, an advanced armorer, there are certain things that I always look for when I'm inspecting weapons. So we're going to pretend that this is a brand new off-the-shelf weapon. This is my lightweight 16-inch. Now this is a pretty cool setup. It's got a Noveski Gen 2 chainsaw lower, BCM upper with Daniel Defense uh, MFR 12 rail and Daniel Defense lightweight 16 uh, Crumb Hammer Forge barrel on it. Now let's say this is a factory weapon. What we're going to be looking at, we're going to look at the overall quality. We're going to make sure that there's no dinks, discoloration, anything like that. We want to make sure that we're buying exactly what we think we're buying. You're looking for blemishes, you're looking for damage from the manufacturer, or you're looking for damage from the retail uh, side of it. Okay. So we look at it top to bottom or bottom to top, however you want to. Do it methodically. Start at the top, look down the side, make sure everything's, everything's there first and foremost. Go around, look at the other side. Look at everything on there. Manipulate everything. Make sure everything works. Okay, when they're going to hand it to you, they're probably going to hand you an unloaded weapon. So the first thing we always want to do is look inside, look inside the chamber. First thing to do when you look inside the chamber, obviously you're looking to make sure that the weapon is clear. Well, not only that, but another good thing to look at is to look inside and see if it has feed ramps. Okay? Your feed ramps are little ramps inside of the barrel extension. So does the barrel extension have feed ramps, yes or no? Then you look at the upper receiver. Is it an A3 or an A4 upper receiver? An A3 upper receiver will not have feed ramps cut into the front of the receiver where it meets the barrel extension. An A4, also known as an M4 upper receiver, or in the case of Noveski, an N as a November 4, will have receiver, uh, the front of the receiver cut with feed ramps. So that's something to look for. Am I buying an A3 upper or am I buying an A4 upper? I don't like A3 uppers. I think they're worthless. There's no reason why they, anybody should be selling them. It's just my opinion. A4, M4 upper receivers can solve a lot of problems. Eliminate, helps eliminate feeding issues, and you can use them on both carbines and rifles. 
So that's what we're looking at. If you need to shotgun the weapon, then go ahead and shotgun it, pull the bolt out, and take a look at it. So we'll look at that in that respect. So we're going to shotgun the weapon. Okay. This is shotgunning the weapon. We're going to take a look inside. So we're going to look at the upper receiver. You can look inside of there and you can see right inside of there exactly what you need to be looking at. Does it have the uh, feed ramps cut in? Okay. Then we're going to take a look at the bolt. First thing and first and foremost, look at the carrier. Right here we have the gas key on top of the bolt carrier group. This piece right here is a gas key. Try and wiggle it. It should be perfectly solid. If there's any wiggle, it's, it's a fail. Then take a look at the screws right here. The screws should be staked. And by properly staked, what I mean is there should be actual metal contacting the screw, completely contacting the screw on both sides of each screw and if there is a gap in there, which some companies do have, uh, that is a potential problem because it can allow the screws to back out during, during firing and cause the gas key to get uh, loose, which will then cause gas leaks and your weapon's not going to operate correctly. So we look at that. Then what we're going to do is, if they'll let you, take the bolt out. Look at the bolts, take a look at the bolt and see if uh, the extractor what kind of extractor spring you have. Do you have an upgraded extractor spring? Do you have a standard four, four coil? Dan Defense has a tendency to put three coil uh, extractor springs in some of their some of theirs. I don't know if they continue to do it. I haven't taken a look at a new one in a while. I have a recent one right down here out of the camera view that is a relatively new one and it's still got a three coil spring. It is what it is. I've already upgraded it to a BCM so to uh, or I should say a spring co setup that I got from BCM. So then we're going to look at the carrier. Is it a full auto carrier or is it semi-auto? This is a full auto. It goes all the way down and meets right here. Covers this whole section right here. If it's a semi-auto carrier, it's only going to go to about right here. And there's some Colt Sporters which go all the way back to here. Ideally, I prefer to have a full auto carrier because it's just the way the weapon was built and I don't like to change dynamics inside of a weapon. Eugene Stoner made it correctly and it didn't need to be altered. Um, in this setup right here, this is not an NFA issue, this is not a machine gun. This is a part that is perfectly fine to put inside of any weapon you build, so long as it does not have other parts that are designed to make it a machine gun. And companies like BCM and Noveski have posted information that they've gotten from uh, the ATF that says to that effect. I've called Noveski a number of years ago and they said, yeah, we have, we, we contacted them and that's what they said. And if you go to the BCM website, it says the exact same thing. Bravo Company's always been really good about that stuff. So now we're going to take a look at it. Is everything working correctly? Are there any burrs, any damage to it? Should be working just fine. Your bolt, you want to check and see if it's an MP. You're going to take apart that bolt and you're going to look at it and say, is it magnetic uh, particle? inspected? Is it high pressure tested? You're looking for little marks on here. On this, you can actually see right here on the actual bolt where it says HPMP. So I know that it is. This is a BCM bolt carrier group. Obviously really dirty because I don't clean any of my weapons. But I use Slip 2000 EW well so I don't really need to. Okay. Then we're going to take the bolt carrier, stick it back in, make sure that we have good lockup locks in correctly, it's functioning properly. We're going to look inside, we're going to look at the mechanics, the mechanisms inside. Make sure that the trigger fires straight. You want it perfectly parallel to the upper receiver sides, or to the lower receiver sides, sorry, so that it's not canted off to one side. You want to look inside, make sure that it's connecting to the disconnector properly, and then releasing, and then fire it. Don't do what I just did and accidentally fire it into the bolt catch. Okay. Look inside, take a look at the sear, make sure that the sear on that is flat, make sure it's level, make sure it's square, no damage to it, then you can close it back up. Work the weapon, make sure the weapon works correctly. Is it working properly? It does. Lock the bolt back. Does it work? Give it a shake, make sure it's not going to let it forward. 
a little bit of uh, bomb should allow it to slide back forward. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a magazine, see if they have a magazine. I use P mags a lot, I like P mags, so all I'll do is I'll insert a P mag. It's locked in there, it's not going anywhere. Okay, so we know that it works properly. And we know that the P mag fits in there, and I know that my personal magazine of choice is going to work inside of this. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to magazine release falls free, so we know that that works properly. We know that everything in there is going to kick the rounds out. We're going to take a look at the sights. Do the sights work? Do they flip up? Do they flip down easy? Is there all the components on the sights there? Okay, yes. If it comes with an optic, let's take a look at the optic. Is there damage to the optic? Turn it on. Look at it. Make sure it works. Okay, you're looking for all these features. If it comes with a sling, like this uh, Luru Tactical VTAC sling, there's everything on it that's supposed to be on it. Does it work? Do the QD, does the QD work? Does it adjust? You know, can I, can I mess with the adjustments real easily? Is it working the way it's supposed to work? You're basically making sure that everything on this setup is working properly. Next thing you want to do is if you have an A4 or if you have an M4 type uh, setup where you have removable handguards, take a look at the gas tube. Your gas tube going into the receiver, when it goes in the receiver right here, you should be able to wiggle it back and forth and it should wiggle freely. If it's not wiggling freely, that means that the barrel nut is pushing it off to one side. You need to readjust that. So if they have other models, ask for other models and see if you can wiggle it. Now if you have a free float rail connected onto it, it may be a little bit hard to do that and you're probably not going to be able to do that in there. So that would be something you're going to have to decide to do at home when you take it apart. So there are a couple things to look for when you're purchasing a rifle, both new and used. Um, now when you're looking at optics, particularly with used ones, take a look at the optics. Make sure that everything is working on your optics. Okay. When I'm looking at optics, I'm making sure that nothing is cracked, I'm making sure that the lenses aren't scratched, I'm making sure that it works correctly, you know, does it turn on, does it turn off, I look through it, make sure I'm seeing what I'm supposed to be seeing, okay, grab it, you know, these are on LaRue mounts, these should be rock solid, okay, they are, they're supposed to, they are the way they're supposed to be, Every, is everything Loctited, is everything there, you know, is there any play in it, take a look at everything and determine whether or not there's any problems that should have been fixed that aren't currently fixed. You know, you're, you're paying for it, so make sure it works correctly. One thing I want to touch on before I get going here is components. If you decide you want to build your AR or you want to do some modification to your AR, buying the best components that you can and the highest quality components available on the market are going to give you the best results. Now, what I have here is I have a matched upper and lower receiver by Nevesky Rifle Works. This is an exceptionally high quality setup. It's got a Voltor uh, receiver extension. You know, this is a very high quality setup here. This lower parts kit is a Daniel Defense lower parts kit. They're known for having pretty good quality control, though the lower parts kit is actually made by an outside vendor. In this case, it's marked for L.W. Schneider. This is a white oak armament 16 inch barrel, heavy barrel precision setup. It's a 1 in 7 twist 16 inch barrel. Very high quality, very, actually very affordable barrel for what it is. It's got uh, uh, feed ramps cut into it. You know, when you buy high quality components, you're going to have the features. You're going to have that there. You know, I have a Nevesky barrel on one of my rifles, and it's a $400 barrel, and it's worth every penny because it's just high quality, uh, high quality components. And when you spend the money on high quality components, you're going to get a high quality result. You'll notice that all my rifles here are custom. I have a LaRue lower with a Veltor upper. I have a Nevesky Gen 2 uh, chainsaw lower on a BCM upper. You know, I have a Geisley trigger set up in this. I have Aimpoint. I always run Aimpoint. You know, I have quality components, and when I use quality components, it gives me a quality result because I know that there is a control in place, and I know that I will have the best uh, possible quality on the market. So I know I'm not going to have those issues. All rifles are, ma are machines. They're, they're prone to having issues. But you can reduce the propensity for these issues and the chances of these issues by buying high quality components. If you have any other uh, questions, you can also email me, uh, contact me through YouTube here. And until next time, keep around in the chamber.